Back, U.S. lawmakers welcomed the president of Taiwan for her first official state visit last week, despite strong objections from the Chinese government, which claims that the nation of Taiwan as part of the People's Republic. The visit coming just a day after the Defense Department approved $2 billion in arms sales to Taiwan. Joining me right now is Congressman Michael McCall, who was one of the lawmakers to meet with the Taiwanese president. And it is good to see you this morning, sir. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, Maria. Good Tell to be me, here. We, we were just talking about China with Jimmy Lai. Tell me what you spoke with the Taiwanese president about. Obviously, this is something that's not going to go over well with China. Uh, not at all. And I think our support for Taiwan really frustrates the Chinese. The Chinese are getting very aggressive uh, in Hong Kong, as you just heard. They're also getting very aggressive in Taiwan. I talked to the Madam President. She thinks they're going to interfere in her elections to get a Chinese puppet, if you will, elected, uh, just like the case I dealt with in the late 1990s that dire directed us to um, China Aerospace, director of Chinese intelligence, putting money into the Clinton campaign because of the policies. Uh, this has been going on for a long time, Maria, but it's really hitting a, a hot spot right now. Um, and we have to support Taiwan. They stand for freedom and democracy in the region, and that is precisely why uh, Chairman Engel and I approved uh, the military sales to Taiwan of $2.2 billion so, so Taiwan can not protect themselves from China. Yeah, let's talk about that. You mentioned, first of all, the Taiwanese elections. That's January 11th, 2020. She's expecting uh, the, the Chinese to interfere in that election. Uh, as far as these, th this equipment that you're talking about, the military equipment, $2 billion, what does Taiwan want this for? Tell me about the conversation around that military equipment. <clears throat> Your committee has to oversee all, all uh, sales of, of military equipment to foreigners. That's right. I, I and Chairman Engel approve all foreign military and commercial sales. Uh, the administration notified us of their intent to sale uh, 2.2 billion Javelin missiles, Abram tanks, uh, a lot of uh, you know, grenades, very self-defense in, in posture, but it sends a very strong message to China. Uh, as I said to their, their convention uh, Friday night, we say don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with Taiwan. And we're going to arm Taiwan so she can defend herself from what's become a very aggressive uh, Chinese Communist Party right on their doorstep. Wow. And some of those systems, we should point out, are made by Lockheed Martin. The president was with Lockheed Martin, uh, the CEO, Marilyn Houston, last week. I guess there's even a further alliance between Lockheed and, and, and the government, given the fact that they're going to keep some of their production uh, in Pennsylvania, which was a big deal to the president. Look, I've got to get into Taiwan with you, Congressman. Let's take a short break. And then I want to ask you why we are also... Uh, selling to, to Taiwan. We're also selling to Turkey, but Turkey is doing something that's raising some eyebrows. We're selling them military equipment, but they're also buying from Russia. Quick break, and then we'll talk about that. More with Congressman Michael McCall when we come right back. Stay with us. Welcome back, and I'm back with Congressman Michael McCall, ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And Congressman, before I get into uh, what I want to ask you about Turkey, let me get your take on the authorization for military force bill. You made some comments on the floor this week, uh, basically uh, pushing back on any NDAA amendments that would repeal that authorization. Where do you sit on this as we, as we look at a new threat from Iran and we look at provocations from China, et cetera? I think it's a very a dangerous, reckless policy by the Democrats to, uh, to repeal the 2001 AUMF with no replacement to it. I'm all for arguing about updating the 2001 AUMF after 9-11, but this would legalize, or I'm sorry, illegalize all global counterterrorism operations in the world that we are conducting. And then they want to repeal the 2002 uh, with Iraq. And we, of course, we know ISIS is still a threat. In Iraq, and then finally, they want to preemptively uh, put forward an AUMF for Iran, even though the president has not gone to war with Iran. In fact, every indication I've seen is he he does not want to go to war with Iran. That's why he did not respond back militarily after they shot down a U.S. military, you know, asset. He's trying to use a diplomatic route here. So these right. are all three very, uh, I think, very misguided.
Yeah, even as Iran is pretty clearly telling us they want to enrich uranium further and break the terms of that, that Iran deal. Okay, quickly on Turkey now. I know that we're selling Turkey military equipment. Your committee overseeing that. They're also buying military equipment from Russia. Very problematic. You have a NATO ally buying Russian military equipment. I sat down with the foreign minister of Turkey and the ambassador and warned them, just as Secretary Pompeo did, that you can't have it both ways. You can't be a NATO ally and buy Russian uh, military equipment. And what endangers it even more so, we offered them the Patriot uh, missile uh, battery system. Uh, they chose the Russian instead. This actually blocks the F-35 sales because, because the S-400 actually tracks our F-35s and would put our F-35 uh, planes in jeopardy if, if uh, Turkey goes forward, which it appears, Maria, that they're doing. And, and, and then what makes it even more egregious is that this will now kick in the Russian sanctions bill that we, Lindsey Graham and I passed, uh, you know, last year. Um, now we have to look at, are we going to sanction a NATO ally for buying Russian military equipment? I think Erdogan is making a serious mistake. I would urge him and his administration uh, to reject uh, Russian military sales and buy American. Yeah, and, and by the way, we should point out that that F-400 that they're buying from Russia can actually shoot down the F-35. Precisely. I they're understand. incongruent. You can't, have, you can't have both of them. Wow. In the same country, that, we have a military base in Turkey, which even complicates it even that much more. That's really frightening. All right, real quick before you go, look, you heard Lindsey Graham earlier on the border bill. You tried this. You had the good Latin McCall bill. You you yeah. you, were, you you dealt with DACA. You dealt with the loopholes, and what happened? We fixed it. I mean, 25 billion for border. We had a mayor-based immigration system. We most importantly did away with the legal loopholes. These asylum laws we need to change because that's the magnet that the cartels now know how to exploit to get in family units into the United States. But the Democrats and within tw sign it. 20 days, uh, every Democrat voted against it, and we had a DACA fix as well. Mm, and it's um, very unfortunate we didn't pass that. Sir, it's great to have you on the program this morning. Thanks so much for joining me. No, thanks, Maria. Congressman Michael McCall, that'll do it for us. Have a great Sunday, everybody. I'm Maria Bartiromo. I'll see you next week on Fox Business.